In my last video, where I talked of the issues faced by M1 MacBook users, there was one that has concerned a lot of people, and rightly so. The issue with swap file usage and the effect this has on the health of your internal SSD. If this issue is in fact as serious as it has been made out to be, then the implication is total SSD failure and hence logic board replacement. And that too much sooner than it should be. Let's understand this before we exchange findings on our specific computers. A spinning hard drive has moving parts and hence it's easy to see how these mechanical items will fail over time. But with an SSD, it may seem that there is no wear and tear happening as it goes through daily read and write cycles. But in reality, all SSDs are based on flash memory and have a finite life. Several factors such as memory wear, read disturbance and high temperatures can affect the performance and health of the drive. Now the metric used to define and guarantee a disk's usable life is called TBW, which stands for total bytes written. This is usually defined in terabytes. Once an SSD hits its maximum specified TBW, or in layman terms, once the maximum amount of data it was designed to handle has been written to it, the memory cells within it begin degrading, and data loss and drive failure becomes a real possibility. Now the M1 MacBooks can use either Samsung or Toshiba internal SSDs and they come with a TBW rating in the region of 1650 TB. This is a generalization obtained by using specs for similar SSDs, but bear in mind that Apple doesn't officially reveal the actual TBW ratings. So you're fine writing that amount of data to the SSD during its design life. Here's where the problems are allegedly emerging. Whilst most users are reporting 2-3% to of usage of this figure, or 33-50 to 50 TB of total bytes written, there are a few with up to 10% or 165 TB written already in just 3 months. Personally, I showed disk usage of 30.6 TB written since December 2020, or around 1% of the total TBW possible with my internal SSD. That would translate to around 4% written a year. Even if I was to be pessimistic about this and consider it to be 10% per year, that still gives me around 10 years of usable life, which is more than sufficient life for a laptop in today's times. If you wish to check your TBW figures for your particular SSD, you can use a simple command line tool. But to get to the final results, it involves following a number of steps. For this, there is an excellent video guide by the Constant Geekery podcast on how to get these figures. I will also link that in the description. In fact, they're running a survey based on this that you should participate in if you decide to go through the steps to obtain this information as that will enable them to have enough data to make a meaningful conclusion. So here's my take on this. Yes, the M1 MacBooks use a lot of the swap file. As we progress in terms of years and technology, RAM requirements are not set to decrease. Programs and apps are getting more and more capable and complex. We're constantly upgrading the video formats available and editing these on mobile devices and laptops and desktops. Obviously, 8K video will have more demanding requirements compared to 4K or 1080p video. High res still photos will also impose a similar burden on system resources. So if you've watched any of my other M1 coverage, you will know that I have recommended the 512GB option over the 256GB in terms of storage and the 16GB RAM option for those able to afford this and with the time available to get this customized and delivered. There was anyway a strong case to be made for these crucial upgrades and if anything this issue adds more reason to consider this remember the tbw ratings go up as you climb the storage ladder so the 512 gb will have a higher threshold than the 256 gb option and so on now for those that already have one of these macs or even one of the intel models or perhaps you're unable or unwilling to go beyond the 8 gb base variants Know that, like with anything else, whilst the internal SSDs inside these machines do have a finite life and swap file usage does contribute to their wear and tear, it is unlikely to be a cause for complaint for you during the normal course of this computer's usable life. At the moment, there is a lot of conjecture about this, from M1 machines having a bug to even misreporting by users. I suspect that RAM usage in general is on the rise and that is a cause for using more swap file.
Now, if any one of you would like to delve deeper into this, do go through some of the links I will share in the description to get a deeper understanding on how flash memory works or to read more about how this is affecting the M1 Max. But if you're just here out of concern for this issue, I would say most of you can rest assured that this will not affect you in any way and you can continue using or go ahead with your purchase of one of these incredible machines. I reiterate that these are probably the only Mac computers worth buying for the majority of people at the moment. Analyze your intended usage and if you require a lot of daily heavy lifting, get as much RAM and storage as you can. Do check out my other coverage on the M1 Max, from RAM to storage to accessories. In fact, it's best to view the entire playlist. All links in the description. But if you're short of time, make sure you check out these two videos at least. The RAM question by clicking here and a comparison with the Intel Max by clicking here. See you in the next one.